Hello, my name is Aviva, and today I wanted to share with you some book recommendations based off of the specific tropes that you requested. So I've actually made this video three times in the past, and you guys seem to have been really enjoying them. So I wanted to do it again, also because I really like making them. So either way, what I'm going to be doing is taking the responses that I got from my Instagram stories. I posted something on my stories a couple of days ago, asking you guys to send me in tropes and scenarios and things like that. And I'm basically going to match up a book for it. So I did work very hard to actually go through my last three videos that I had made so that I don't have a lot of overlaps or anything like that. I do think I have like maybe two or three books that I'm like repeating in this video specifically, but it's for a different scenario. So either way, um, if you did want to check out the previous videos, then I will make sure to have them all linked down in the description below. Oh, Cooper, you really have to move now. Okay, go. We'll wait for him to sit down. Okay, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I will have the other um, videos linked down in the description below because I definitely recommend checking it out because for a lot of the responses that I'd gotten, I had already answered them in my previous videos. I will also have a playlist linked down below where I have all these different book recommendation videos for very basic tropes like fake dating, enemies lovers, grumpy sunshine, a guy falls first, things along those lines. Like I've made a ton of videos like that and I got a lot of requests for basic tropes along those lines. So if you did want recommendations for things like that, I basically have like a whole collection of things down in the description for you. So either way, with that said, I feel like that is all I wanted to tell you. So let's get into it. First up, someone asked when the dude grovels after doing something stupid to the main character, I mean, serious groveling. So the first one that I had thought of was actually Luna and the Lie by Mariana's Pod. And my reasoning for this is first of all, because I just recently reread this book and it might've been better the second time around. I don't even know, but either way, I always remembered from this book, like the reason why I loved it was for the groveling at the end because Marianne's Potter writes extremely slow burn romances so therefore her groveling was extremely slow and like you know uh not laid out how do you say that it was extremely slow and like it took a minute for him to, like for her to actually forgive him if that makes sense and that is why I really enjoyed this book like I'm sure like it was not a chapter like it was like a moment there where he really had to work hard to get her forgiveness and that is why I absolutely recommend this if you are looking for some real good groveling in your romance book. So if you're not familiar with this one, this is a slow burn romance between a boss and an employee. This girl, she works for a mechanic shop as like one of the painters and she's going to end up having a romance with one of the owners of this mechanic shop who she happens to like, you know, he owes her a favor because a couple of years ago she like told a lie for him and now he's always like, oh, you know, can I, uh, you know, do you want to cash in your favor? Like I owe you a favor, please take it because I don't want to owe you anything sort of thing. And she's always saying, you know, and then obviously at the beginning of the book, she has something that she needs from him. So she's going to cash in the favor and then it's going to be their slow burn romance. So it's very heavy on like the grumpy sunshine sort of thing. And it's also a very big age gap. I don't remember the exact details. Maybe it's like 26 to 43, but I remember it being one of her larger age gaps than some of her other books, even though most of her books are age gap romances. But either way, highly recommend this book. One of my favorites by Mariana's Pata. And if you have not read it yet and you like groveling, then, you know, this is the one you should check out. But either way, before I, you know, move on, I have one more book that I want to share with you, which is not necessarily like, you know, the perfect one to recommend because it is the third book in a series. But either way, The Finish Line by Kate Stewart. This is the third book in the Raven Hood series. And you do have to read a book one and book two for this book to actually make sense. Like you're following one storyline, but happens to be, this is an entire book of groveling because the guy really, really, really messed up. And it took an entire book for him to basically win back her trust. And I literally do not mean that lightly. Like this entire book was him like basically begging on his knees for like forgiveness and for like, you know, her to love him again. So if that is something that you really, really like, and you are willing to commit to this series and you haven't read it yet, and you know, you've been interested in in the past because it is very, very popular, then I definitely do recommend checking this one out. Next, someone asked for something very similar, which was a single parent with a lot of groveling and happens to be the only one I was able to think of that specifically had like more than half a second of groveling was Down Too Deep by Jay Daniels. So this is actually a book that was recommended to me because of this little series that I've been doing. I don't remember which one it was, but basically someone had asked for like, you know, a single parent book where both of them are single parents. And then I got this book recommendation because of it. And I ended up picking it up and I ended up actually really enjoying it. So 
you're basically following in this book um these two people who are both single parents she is single parents too i believe twins and then he is just like you know a single dad to this baby i think his his wife had died like two years ago and he never really was prepared to actually become a single father so he's always like pawned off the kid to his grand like to his parents to the grandparents and basically at the beginning of the story the grandparents can't do it anymore so he basically has to like take his kid back and figure out how to like you know take care of uh him or her. i don't remember if it was a girl or a boy but either way um this girl basically realizes like the predicament that he's in and she offers to babysit the kid because she's already babysitting her own kids because it's in the middle of like summer break and everything like that so it is more or less like a nanny sort of romance but it's more of like a babysitting thing i wouldn't really consider her a nanny i would consider it more of like she's doing him a favor by watching his kid sort of situation but either way it was a really really good romance it's and like a really good story overall everything along those lines i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this book i'm pretty sure i even gave it five stars by the time i got to the end of it because i remember loving the end because i feel like it really came full circle and he messed up he did something that like you kind of saw coming the entire book because like you know he was kind of just trying to figure out how to be a parent how to be in a relationship and things along those lines and then obviously at the end he messed it up a little bit and then he really had to grovel hard to win back her trust and everything like that so if you did want a single parent with groveling i definitely recommend giving this one a shot because it did have it had a good moment there next someone asked for when he falls first and harder and the thing is is that this is one of my favorite combinations like in the world first of all i love when the guy falls first because i just love seeing like him like have those feelings before her because usually it does end up working out where he has fallen harder for her and one of my favorite books that has this situation going for it is binding 13 by chloe walsh so this is the first book in a duet so it's first binding 13 and then it is keeping 13 and you do have to read both books to get your happily ever after and yes it is a really big commitment because these books are freaking massive and the words are like absolutely tiny but either way if you're willing to commit then I, I personally had a great time with this series and um you know I would say that it is worth the read and happens to be in the story it is definitely a guy falls first guy falls harder situation so you are following this girl who she's in high school and she was very heavily bullied her entire life and at one point it gets way way too bad that her parents finally pull her out of public school and put her into private school to hopefully like fix the situation and basically when she gets there on the first day she meets this very popular guy who's like a rugby prodigy of sorts and basically he kind of like you know attaches himself to her a little bit and he kind of like figures out why she had transferred schools and all of a sudden he becomes extremely protective of her like basically turns into her bodyguard like he's really worried that like you know something is bad going to happen to her because of her past and therefore he's always like around the corner waiting to like save the day and things like that and he definitely falls for her first and he definitely falls for her harder like he is absolutely obsessed with her like not in a creepy way but in a way where it's like oh my god I love this guy can he be my boyfriend sort of thing you know so basically if you really like a guy falls first guy falls harder situation then i definitely recommend giving this one a shot and i know that it's a commitment but i'm telling you it is worth it next up someone asked for a single dad and a nanny romance and i wanted to give you a recent read of mine as opposed to like let's say a favorite of mine because i have read a couple of these in the past and i don't really know specifically which one is my favorite like i really enjoyed them all for what they are and they all have their own issues going on and it happens to be like heartless it had one issue going on with me that i did recently talk about in the last video that I made I talked about like if these books that I've recently read are worth the read or not and I talked about like you know the one thing that I didn't like about this book in that video so if you did want to check it out I recommend just like reading like watching that video but either way besides for that one thing that I didn't like in the story I really really did truthfully very much like this book and it was a very good nanny single dad sort of romance it was also like a small town situation with a guy falls first a guy falls I feel like I feel like he fell harder but it is also like an age gap and a grumpy sunshine there were so many good elements going on in this book specifically and happens to be it was a single dad and a nanny and I think that if you are looking for that scenario specifically then this one would be a really good one to check out first of all because it's on Kindle Unlimited so it is free to like the majority of people who I know already have Kindle Unlimited and also it is a new release so it's always fun to read something new and also I just think that it did a really good job of the single dad ex nanny situation so yeah next up someone asked for a fake dating books and i know that i said like in the beginning of this video that i wasn't going to do any recommendations for any of the basic tropes because i've made videos for them in the past i'm always adding to that playlist making new videos and everything like that but happens to be i did recently read two fake dating stories and i really wanted to share them because i really did thoroughly enjoy them so i feel like you know making an exception to my own rules so first up i have the kiss Gosha by helen hong so this is actually a reread for me and i had forgotten how much i really enjoyed this book and happens to be it's a fake dating scenario and because i recently reread it and it's like it's become a new 
favorite that I forgot was a favorite, if that makes sense. Like it was always a favorite, but I read it so long ago that I forgot that it was a favorite. And now it is a new old favorite. You, did you get that? Either way, I definitely recommend checking this out if you're into fake dating books. This is one of those, you know, very acute covers that is very misleading because it actually is a very steamy romance. So in this book, you are following this girl who has high functioning Asperger's and everything in her life is going like absolutely perfect. She's very successful, very well off. Like everything is great. Her only issue is that she has a little bit of um, a problem problems with uh, sex and like going on dates and things like that because you know because of her Asperger's like she doesn't like to be touched and she's very like you know um unique in that sense and basically at the beginning of the story she decides that she is going to hire a male escort to teach her everything that she needs to know like you know when she's in a safe environment and it's all on her core and everything like that where she doesn't have to feel weird about like you know uh not being comfortable with certain things she's basically going to hire someone to help her fix her little issue and basically throughout the story they're going to end up fake dating he's going to end up taking this job on teaching her everything that she needs to know and basically they're going to end up falling in love so this is an amazing amazing story i know that it's a very popular book but if you haven't read it yet and you were looking for a fake dating like story then i don't know what you're waiting for this is the one to read but happens to be if you did read this one and you wanted another recommendation then i do have one more for you because it was a recent read of mine and i really did enjoy it and that one is blindside by candy steiner so this is another very popular one and i'd be a little bit surprised if you haven't heard about it before but in case you haven't this is a college football romance you're basically following this guy who was on the college like football team and his girlfriend had recently broke up with him and then it's going to end up being a fake dating scenario between one of the media managers on her on his like you know team and everything like that who happens to have a crush on some else so basically he's going to like you know figure out that she has a crush on this guy so he's gonna be like look I will fake date you so that you can get this guy jealous and hopefully win him over and in exchange you will help me get my ex jealous so that um you know I can win her back and everything like that and then obviously they're gonna uh, they're gonna fall for each other instead of you know falling for the people that they were trying to win by this whole scenario thing and it's gonna be a very cute romance so happens to be I really 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 loved the fake dating scenario in this book like the way that the fake dating moments went down I was all here for like what I really loved about it specifically was how in the moments that they were actually faking it it didn't feel like they were faking it like they were honestly like truly having an amazing time with each other and nothing actually felt forced or faked or anything like that and that is why I really enjoyed the scenario of how it worked out like I wasn't like oh they started off and they like really didn't want to be in each other's presence but like they had to put on a show like the entire time it felt really real and genuine and that is why I liked the way that this fake dating story specifically developed and I did have a little bit of an issue with like you know the ending of the book like the whole like third act conflict sort of thing it didn't really it wasn't really like up my alley but at the end of the day this still was a really great book and it still had a great ending just not like a great ending before the ending if that makes sense so either way if you haven't read this one yet and you want a fake dating book I definitely recommend giving this one a shot but either way after that someone asked for a one bed trope and I feel like I get this request very very often and I definitely do a uh, plan on making a whole specific video for books that have one bed tropes in it I don't know if I've even made one in the past I might have I don't know but either way I have been working on a list for a while now. And I do plan to share it with you soon, but it happens to be I decided that I wanted to share with you just one in today's video because I had recently done a reread of it and I had forgotten how amazing the one bed trope moment was in this book. So either way, that is um, All Roads Lead Here by Marianne's Potta. So this was the first Marianne's Potta book that I had ever read and I did recently do a reread of it and happens to be in this story, there's one moment where he basically like makes up a camping situation for her like in his like, you know, uh, what is it in his driveway? And everything like that and they just have the cutest moment in the freaking world and literally I'm pretty sure it might be my favorite moment from this entire book usually like one bed tropes I really enjoy them for what they are and I really liked the moment but this is like this was such a one bed trope moment really like a one ten trope moment but either way it was absolutely amazing and if you are looking for something like that and you like slow burn romances then I definitely recommend giving this one a shot so if you're not familiar this is basically about a girl who recently got out of a very long relationship and she decides that she wants to like start fresh in a new town well not a new town it's actually a town that she had grown up when grown up in when she was younger with her mother and basically she decides to move back there as an adult and just like you know start her life fresh as a single person because you know she's only used to being with like you know another person in her life sort of thing either way She's going to go there. She's going to end up renting an apartment from this guy. And this guy, it was a whole situation of like, he didn't really like realize that he was renting it to her, but he's going to basically end up letting her stay. So they don't really get along in the beginning. And he also happens to be a single dad. And basically she's just going to go like live her life, you know, get to know herself. And then she's obviously slowly going to like get close to this people that she's renting from, like the father and then obviously the son as well. And obviously it's going to be a very, very slow burn romance. But basically there is a one bed trope in this book. And it probably is one of my favorite one bed trope scenarios that has happened to 
ever in a story. Well, I will say that A Court of Mist and Fury, that is one of my favorite one bed tropes too, but that is like such a classic recommendation. I did. I was trying to stay away from like absolute classics that I mention all the time. So either way, this is the one you get. Next up, someone asked for a book with a who did this to you moment. And it happens to be, you know, like the who did this to you moment, like, you know, the girl is hurt or the girl's crying and then the guy comes over and is being like, who did this to you? I'm gonna murder whoever made you cry or anything like that. And basically I have been working on a list of books that have this in it for a while now. Do plan to make that video soon. It hasn't come yet, but either way, I did wanna share with you two books that have this situation in it that I have read recently and I really enjoyed. And I really enjoyed this moment specifically in them. And either way, the first book that I have for you is The Devil You Know by Elizabeth or work. So this is the third book in one of her companion series. I think it's called like the devil companion series, but either way, I read the first book in the series, really enjoyed that. I have the second book and I had skipped it because I really wanted to read the third book first because I liked the scenario of what the story was actually about. So in this book, you're following kind of like an enemy lover's workplace environment sort of romance. These two people are lawyers. They work in the same firm and they very much do not get along. And then at the beginning of the book, they're going to be set up to have to work like on a new project together of sorts. And then obviously it's going to be like a forced proximity they're going to slowly fall for each other sort of situation. But either way, in this book, there's a moment where this girl ends up getting like kind of sexually assaulted. It didn't go like too far or anything like that, but she was in a very like iffy situation and she did end up getting a bruise from it. And then later on, the guy basically like, you know, asked her like, who did this to you? And then she lies to him, happens to be like, she's like, oh, nothing. It was no big deal, whatever. And so he just like brushes it off. And then later on, he finds out that like it actually was something and he finds out who it is and he goes and like seeks vengeance for her. And the whole way that that went down, oh my God, it was amazing. So if you really do like a who did this to you moment, without it just being like a oh who did this to you I like you know he doesn't just say it he actually like does something about it then I definitely recommend giving this one a shot because it really it was very well placed in this story if that makes sense but either way after this I do have one more that fits into that scenario that I did recently read and I did recently enjoy and that is On the Rocks by Candy Steiner so this is the first book in her Becker Brothers Companion series. And what is this story actually about? I honestly forgot a little bit. Oh, right. Okay. This story is about this guy who works in a um, whiskey distillery. And basically he's going to end up having a romance with a girl that is much younger than him that happens to be engaged to somebody else. And basically like the girl's going to come in to try and buy like, you know, a barrel of whiskey for like her fiance. And basically like he's going to get into her head being like, oh, is this really what you want? Like, you know, you're start you're setting yourself up for this very specific life and you don't seem to be very happy about it and basically he's going to make her question like if this is really what she wants and everything like that and obviously they're going to end up becoming friends he's going to fall for her first and he's kind of going to try to convince her to like break up her engagement because like she obviously is very unhappy in it and then obviously slowly things are just going to work out and, and it's going to be a very cute romance but basically at one point in the story like she's crying and she like shows about his door doorstep and he's like who did this to you i'm going to murder anybody who made you cry like this and it was just it was one of those moments where i'm like oh <gasps> Oh my God, I love this guy. So basically, I don't think I, um, you know, actually explained this book very well, but it is a small town romance with an age gap and a guy falls for a scenario and it is just a really, really good time. It has a forbiddenness aspect to it and I absolutely loved it. So I definitely recommend checking it out if you are into the who did this to moment. So that is that. Next up, someone asked for when he is a virgin and she is not, and they are both over 18. So that was actually a very good um, question to ask. So thank you so much for asking that because for a second there, I'm like, this is not a book. Like it did not like click in my head right away that I actually had a recommendation for you. And then afterwards I realized that I actually do have a couple that can somewhat fit into the scenario. So for the first one, that was the exact of what you actually asked for. I found a twice shy by Sarah Hoggle. So this is a very quick, short, easy, rom-com cute read and it's basically about this girl who had just inherited a house from her aunt or something that had passed away and then when she gets to the house she finds out that she is not the only inheritor that she actually has to share it with the groundskeeper that had worked there for the past couple of years before her aunt had passed away so basically they really don't get along right off the bat and then they're going to have to work together to renovate the place and then decide what they're going to do with it together because they both have different thoughts of what they want to do and obviously they're going to have to just like sell it get rid of it because they're not going to come to an agreement because they're not really getting along Long. It has a grumpy southern situation. It has a forced proximity situation. And it is a very, very, very sweet, sweet romance. Like I can't stress that enough how sweet this book is. But either way, in this story, you are following a guy who is very, very inexperienced. He actually has 
very heavy social anxiety or some sort of like different type of anxiety. I think it was social anxiety. And either way, he is very uncomfortable around people and everything like that. And that's kind of one of the reasons why he's very grumpy and very introverted sort of feeling. And basically she's just like a normal person. She's very sunshine, very happy. And um, basically she is, um, you know, not a virgin and he is, and they both are adults. So it does fit into exactly what you asked for. So if you wanted a book like this, then this was the only one I was able to think of. But happens to be, I did have two other books that kind of fit into this but honestly it's a little bit off only because you said he she so I have actually two male male romances to share with you that I thought fit into this scenario kind of so let me explain first up I wanted to share um Top Secret by Serena Bowen and Al Kennedy so this is a college sports romance that has an enemies to lovers sort of vibe you're basically following this guy who is in a fraternity and he really hates the guy that is in his fraternity that lives next door to him and they very much do not get along and at the beginning of the story this guy has a girlfriend and his girlfriend asked for her birthday to basically give her a threesome so this guy goes on an app to try and find a guy to like you know join him in this threesome and when he like you know finds somebody he starts talking to him and realizing that he didn't really know what he was getting himself into in this threesome scenario like he has to figure out the details of it and once he's talking to this guy this guy is basically like asking him all these questions and he's starting to realize like maybe am I into guys like I never thought about this but I'm thinking that this is turning me on a little bit more than I ever expected it to and basically it's going to end up being their romance except they're anonymously talking on this app and he doesn't realize that the person he's talking to is the guy that lives next door to him that is part of this fraternity that he absolutely hates so there's a lot of different layers going on in the story and happens to be uh, why I'm putting it into this scenario is because he is technically a virgin to all things gay and they are both over 18 because they're in college. So basically it's like one of these guys, he is very familiar with, you know, getting it on with guys. One of these guys, even though he's not a virgin, he's technically a virgin in that sense. And basically I thought that technically it kind of fit into what you were asking for. So I stretched it a little bit, but I still think that it fits. So basically this is my recommendation for you. And then happens to be, I have one more that is very similar to exactly what I just said, which is Red, White, and Royal Blue. So this is a very, very, very popular book. And I would get, I, again, I would be surprised if you haven't heard about it before, but I wanted to add it in because honestly, I feel like I have not talked about this book on my channel in probably like a year or two, but I remember really enjoying it when I had read it. So this is basically about this um, kid, this guy who is the son of the president of the United States. And he's going to end up having a romance with the Prince of England. And it's a very like, you know, very classic story. I'm not going to give you too many details. Deals. But basically, it kind of has the same thing as Top Secret did of this guy never really realized that he might be gay and he is basically a virgin in all things gay and this other guy is not a virgin and basically he is going to teach him everything that he needs to know as he figures out his sexuality sort of situation. So, you know, if that sounds something like, it's a, if, it, if it sounds like it's something up your alley, I recommend giving this one a shot. So someone responded with the word sickbed, and that is not a lot of information to go off of, except I actually do have a recommendation that fits into the sickbed scenario. So I wanted to share it with you, even though this might not have been the intention that you had when you were sharing it, because you didn't really give me a lot of information to go off of. But either way, that book is Stay With Me by Mila Gray. So this is the second book in her Come Back to Me companion series, and this is a YA book, or maybe it's new adult. I honestly do not remember because I read it a very long time ago, and I wouldn't be, I'm not too sure what it would be categorized that but it definitely isn't like a regular adult book but either way in this story you are following this girl who just got an internship at one of these like centers where um people in the marines who got very much hurt basically go to like you know recuperate and get better so there's a lot of like you know intense things going on in the story because you're dealing with a lot of ex-military people who are literally like very very heavily injured they're dealing with ptsd they're dealing with depression there's like suicidal things going on in this book and there's a lot of like heavy heavy topics except that is kind of like you know the entire thing about this book and basically at the beginning of the story you are following um you know you meet this girl and she just got this internship and she basically gets put on to work with this guy who is currently blind because of an explosion that he was in and basically he is extremely extremely grumpy he does not want to talk to a single person in this place besides for his doctors and he's really having a hard time getting better because you know he's just very depressed and very angry at everything that happened and basically this girl is going to come into his life and slowly start like opening him up and making him start to talk and then obviously they're gonna end up falling for each other 
other. So it, it was a very, very, very good romance at the time that I read it. Like I did read it a long time ago. So if it doesn't end up like pulling through, then, you know, it's only because I read it a very long time ago. But I remember when I read it, I absolutely loved it. Like there were so many good things going on in this book that like I'm a huge fan of like the grumpy sunshine, the damaged hero, the very like, you know, there was just, there was a lot of good stuff and it happens to be, it does take place on a sick bed because for the majority of this book, this guy is literally sitting on his sick bed and he's going to get to know the girl while he's literally sitting there. So if you wanted a book that takes place on a sick bed, then basically this is my recommendation for you. So I only have a couple more that I've decided to go through because we've already been sitting here for a very long time. But either way, if somebody did ask for a slow burn enemies to lovers in a fantasy world, and it happens to be, I do not read a lot of fantasy anymore, even though I have been slowly getting myself back into the genre because, you know, I've kind of ran out of romance books that I wanted to read lately. So I decided that I have to go back to all these book goodies sort of thing. And either way, because I did get this, um, you know, question, I decided that I wanted to answer it because when I was very heavy into my fantasy romance, like, you know, era, I did come across a lot of really good books that were slow burn enemies to lovers, you know, romances. And therefore I decided that I wanted to share two of them with you. So the first one is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Dehir. So this is the first book in a four book series. And I remember when I read this book that I actually hated how slow burn of a romance it was. So if you really were looking for an enemies to lovers, slow burn romance in a fantasy setting, then this is literally the one for you because I remember being so tortured by the romance aspect in this book because it took forever to get there. Literally up until the end of the fourth book, the couple was not actually happy. Like they kept being pulled apart and then like things along those lines. I'm not even gonna get into it, but basically I remember being so annoyed by how slow burn this romance specifically was. So if that was something that you're looking like looking for, then I definitely recommend giving this one a shot. It is a YA setting, but it's basically about this girl who I believe, you know what? I read this a very long time ago. So if the details are a little bit off, then I apologize, but from what I remember, it's basically about this girl who is a slave and she ends up somehow working for this headmistress in a school that actually like breeds soldiers that are on the opposite side of who she's a slave for. Like she's a slave for these soldiers sort of being and basically she's going to end up working for the school. And when she's there, she's going to meet one of like the best kids in the school who's like the prodigy of, you know, his group or whatever it is. And it basically they are obviously enemies. They're like literally like mortal enemies because, you know, their their people are on opposite sides of this world, this war, whatever it is that you want to call it. And basically they are obviously going to have a very, very, very slow burn enemy lovers romance. So I don't really have any more information to share with you other than that, because, you know, like I said, I read this a very long time ago, but I will say that I absolutely loved the first book in the series. And then the second, third, the second, third and fourth book, it kind of like teetered off from there, but I still really enjoyed it for what it was. There was just a lot about this book that the, a lot about this series that really got me because every time that I wanted something to happen, it would go the opposite direction. So that's kind of like a good thing and a bad thing. But basically, if you want to be a little bit frustrated in your YA fantasy series, but it's still be a very good time, and also you do get a slow burn enemy lovers romance, then basically I, I'm going to recommend you this one. But it happens to be if you read this one before, then I have one more that I wanted to share with you, which is Fallen Kingdom by Morgan Rhodes. So this is the first book, and I believe a six book series. I have it sitting right there. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I believe that this is a six book series. And this is a very Game of Thrones-esque sort of situation. Mostly why I say that is because you are following a lot of people as they are doing their own thing in different parts of the kingdom. So it feels very much like how Game of Thrones is set up where it's like you have a lot of stories going on. They're all going on at the same time and they all connect if they are all different in their own way, if that makes sense. And basically in this story specifically, you are going to get a very, very, very slow burn romance between a prince and a princess who are from rival kingdoms that are kind of like in war with each other. And when I say slow burn, I really mean slow burn because I don't think that the romance actually kicked in until at least the third or the fourth book. I don't even know if the two main characters even met in the first book. I do not remember the details, but what I do remember is that it took forever for this couple to get together. But then by the time that they got together, I remember being absolutely in a love with them. Like it took forever for this whole situation to work itself out because it's literally like one romance over the course of six books and it didn't even kick in right away. And it didn't, the enemy lovers didn't even kick in right away because I'm, I, I'm pretty sure it took a while for these people to actually like, you know, be in the same space with each other. But either way, once it did, there were so many good things going on for it. First of all, heavy, heavy enemy lovers. Also, I remember there being like a one bed trope. And then also I remember there being like a moment where like he ended up becoming very protective of her, even when he actually like hated her guts. And just the way that the romance was 
specifically went down, I remember being very obsessed with. So if you did want a fantasy series that kind of feels like Game of Thrones, except it's YA, and also it will have a very, very, very slow burn enemies lovers romance thing going for it, then I recommend giving this one a shot. But anyway, after that, I'm going to go through two more that kind of fit into like the same universe. It's two different tropes, but I'm like, you know, I'm giving you one recommendation for it, kind of. Either way, first up, somebody asked for Found Family. And honestly, I I think I have said this book specifically in every single one of my videos in a different sort of way. Like somebody asked for something and I find a way to put this book in here. So I'm going to be doing it again. And either way, the book that I want to recommend to you for a perfect Found Family is the Addicted series by Chris Nebecker Ritchie. So yes, this is a very popular book. You probably heard about it before, but in case you haven't read it yet and you were looking for a Found Family sort of situation, then this is without a doubt my favorite found family scenario. First of all, some of these people are actually family, but then the way that all of the couples come together and they all like make a friend group is literally like the thing that I love most about this story. Like obviously, yeah, like the romances, but I love the friend group in this like in this story, like the core six, the core eight, whatever you want to call it, like just the way that they all interact and they all have like their own unique, like, you know, uh, uh, dynamics and things along those lines, just every which way. This is one of my favorite found families um, I've ever read. And if you haven't read it yet, then I definitely recommend it giving it a shot. I will even link a um, video down below of how to read this entire series because it is a 10 book series. It is a very big commitment and people do get confused by it because it's technically two separate series mixed into one. And I have a whole video about it explaining what this series is about and what you could expect and how to read and everything like that. So if you are interested, then I will have that video linked down below. But either way, that kind of leads me into the last one that I wanted to share with you, which is a damaged hero. And I wanted to share with you kind of, first of all, every single character from the Addicted slash Callaway series, because they are all damaged in their own way, but happens to be one of my favorite, like damaged puppy sort of guys. Like he literally feels like a little broken puppy to me is um, Garrison from whatever it takes. And then like, you know, wherever you are. So it's kind of like a duet, except you do originally meet these characters at the end of the Addicted slash Callaway sister series. And then afterwards they end up getting their own duet so it's very confusing I talked about it in my my other video but either way happens to be like Garrison he is such a damaged hero for so many reasons and when I think of a damaged character specifically from the addicted series he is the first one that pops up in my head I just absolutely love this guy I've always wanted to just like give him a hug and tell him that he's loved and that like you know his girlfriend loves him and that like everything is going to be okay and he's got a family and he's got people like I just like he's one of those guys where it's like oh my god like my heart hurts for him so basically if you really wanted a damaged character like that then I definitely recommend you know, giving this one a shot. Technically, 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 yeah, you could read this series, like this duet, like whatever it takes them wherever you are without reading the Addicted series. But I wouldn't recommend doing that because it will hit you so much harder if you actually fall in love with these characters first in the Addicted series and then go and jump to their book at the end. So either way, with that said, that is all the books that I wanted to share with you for today's video. So I do hope that, um, you know, the people who had requested these things specifically ended up watching this. If you did, please let me know if you liked the recommendation that I ended up giving you or just in general, if you haven't um, recommended one, like if you haven't asked for one of these, but either way you liked this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up. I'd also love it if you subscribe to my channel if you are not currently subscribed. And either way, with that said, um, just thank you for taking the time to watch my video because I really do appreciate it. And until next time, enjoy reading.